How's everything looking? Good. We're live, and I've got the thumbnail up right now. You want to l run the intro? Yeah. And then. Oops. <laughs> Hey everybody, Curtis Johnson here, President Managed by Stats, and I'm joined by the uh, one and only Mark Jepson how over here. And um, you know, we're really excited to be uh, giving you a little bit of uh, a live today on basically advertising, a little bit on advertising in Managed by Stats, and um, some really cool things that we're gonna show over here uh, that Mark's gonna show you. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything to cover before we jump into it. I don't really think so, right? No, I guess not. We're pretty we good to jump rock and right roll. in. Um, good. Are we are we actually live? We're live and rocking and rolling. Good. Perfect. Well, then, um, as is kind of normal for anyone who's joined us on uh, any of these Thursdays, uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to sit here majorly and not say much of anything. And I'm going to turn it over to Mark, who really knows what's going on. <laughs> so <laughs> we both Mark. know what's going on. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I got to say it. It's just more fun that way. Um, All right, go cool. for it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, we've had some questions come in um, from, from clients uh, over the last several months. And um, you know, we of course answer these questions as we go along in our tech support. But um, we thought we'd do a little training video uh, to give basically some overall uh, insight into these things and uh, just help people kind of uh, understand the numbers a little bit easier and, uh, and kind of track with all of them. So. Um, the first thing I wanted to do is, uh, let's just share my screen here. Oops, sorry, let me just uh, get this right here. No worries. There we go, perfect. Now yep. I can see your screen and perfect. you in the corner. Okay, awesome. Um, so a common question that comes up is on advertising, uh, when they're looking at their metrics, looking at you know your your how much profit you're getting and how much what you're spending on your different products or brands, um, you're gonna have there's two different areas in here um, that delineate how much you're spending on PPC, and uh, to the to is there's there's some complications in it, but to make it simple, it's it's this uh, over here we uh, in this column right here you had advertising cost. And what this is, and you'll see it says uh, ads cost a prox. What this is, is how much money is being spent right now in that time period that you're looking at. So you could have spent, uh, in this case, I'm looking at a year view, right? $44,000 on advertising. That's how much was spent in that time period. But if you look down here, you have Amazon sponsored ads payments. So this is what you're actually paying Amazon. And it's the payments that you made in those time periods. So Amazon, uh, as a lot of you experienced sellers know, when you uh, are doing ads, they uh, bill you in chunks. Uh, so they'll bill you, bill you in chunks of $500. And uh, so those chunks will come out, right? When those chunks come out, it will be it'll obviously be a little bit offset from what you're actually spending. If you spend, uh, you know, five thousand dollars in a month, um, they are going to be billing you those five hundred dollar increments, and so you could have some of that spend that was that happened on, you know, let's say the thirty first of the month, hasn't been billed to you yet. You you've spent it, and it's something that you know is, is obviously spent on the card uh, or in, in Amazon's eyes. But when they charge your credit card they're gonna charge you that $500. So you could have, let's say two or $300 still sitting you know, in, in what was actually uh, spent on Amazon, but they didn't charge your card yet until let's say a few days after the month. So that's where you're gonna see these, these uh, discrepancies in numbers here. Um, it helps you get a better idea of what you're actually spending. And um, so obviously in this, in this time period, I spent 44,000, but I have $46,000 that was charged to me. So that means I probably had $2,000 from the previous uh, month in like in let's say December of, of 2020 that got charged uh, and ended up getting charged in the new year. So that's kind of a, a very simple breakdown. This is what you're spending. This is what Amazon's charging you. So that's the simplicity there. Um, so 
with that, uh, kind of a simple explanation. Uh, I hope it makes sense. I hope it kind of uh, clears up any kind of confusion as to why those numbers are different. Um, but that's the simplicity of it, okay? The next thing I wanna go to is the advertising hub. Um, and this is something that really kind of helps you get a clear idea of what's happening on your advertising. And um, so let's just go right over here to this other tab here. This is the advertising hub. And uh, for those of you that are not familiar with it, uh, you basically have some date ranges up here. Um, you have uh, these breakdowns of, of uh, boxes here, and then you have some graphs. These boxes, what these are, these are the, uh, the nine kind of key statistics that you're gonna wanna keep an eye on when you're doing advertising. There's obviously a lot more statistics you wanna look into, but um, these are the kind of the, the top level view, kind of like KPIs for your advertising, uh, lower, lower level set of KPIs for your advertising. And um, so this top row is gonna be the current period of time that you're looking at. So in this case, I'm looking at four months. So May 23rd to September 23rd. This top row right here and Mark, is- Is there any particular reason you picked that date range? Um, nope, just, just uh, off the cuff. Cool, yep. good. Um, you obviously have some preset date ranges in here. You have week, two weeks, month, four months, six months, a year, and then custom dates. So you can do it however you like, but uh, I just picked four months. Um, so this is the top row of, of, of metrics that you wanna look at for this time period, right? So this is product revenue, how much total revenue you've, you've uh, uh, received. So that's gonna be like your total sales. Uh, PPC revenue is sales specifically from PPC advertising, so sales that have been attributed to the ad spend that you're doing. ACOS, everyone's familiar with that. That's your advertising cost uh, uh, of sales. And you can see that uh, compared to your previous time period. ACOTS, this is something we coined um, inside of Managed by Stats. Uh, it's, it's advertising cost of total sales. And this is, uh, some people will have heard of it as total ACOS or real or ACOS. Real, yeah, that's yep. right, yeah. And uh, we, we named it, uh, uh, in, instead of having total ACOS, if you shorten that down, that's tacos. And people have a different definition for tacos, right? Uh, that could be your target ACOS or your total ACOS. Um, so instead of using that, we decided to go with uh, ACOTS, uh, advertising cost of total sales. So uh, it, it, it's more technically correct uh, as a term, and that's why we went with that. But that's gonna be a very key uh, figure that we're gonna jump back to and kind of cover in a little bit more detail. Uh, you and might you, recognize that from the title. The exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, and then of course, how much you're spending on PPC. So this is just your PPC spend, pretty simple. And then we break down your units, uh, PPC units compared to organic units. So you wanna make sure you have a, a, a good ratio there. Um, so you can see what your ratio is based off of those two numbers. And then uh, the last one over here, or the second to last one is your profit margin. So this shows you, uh, in this case, this is your actual margin um, with of course the metrics that you've put into Managed by Stats, your cost of goods, um, any kind of inbound shipping costs, our system will think with all that. So this is looking at, okay, is your margin actually increasing or not? And then added to that now is, is your actual profit. So instead of just looking at, is your margin getting better or worse? Um, are we actually getting more money, right? That's kind of the, the bottom dollar, right? Um, is your dollar amount going up or down? How much money are you taking home, putting in your pocket and spending on whatever you want? And I'm sure you guys have noticed that we harp on that particular point probably more than anything else. We, yeah, like you, you wanna make sure that you're paying attention to in every area of your business to profit. That's why it's in the hub. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's the kind of the key stats there. And now um, this top row is of course, the current period that you're looking at May to September. And the bottom row is the previous time period. So whatever that would be um, before May going back uh, four months. And uh, so you can kind of compare really easily visually. Oh, I made 154,000 in sales during that time period. And the previous time period, the previous four months, 119. Okay, is that an up statistic or a down statistic, right? So you can visually see that's kind of a, a something we've been harping on a lot is yeah. making it so that you can actually visually see, oh, there's a good indicator or a bad indicator uh, to help you manage your business. 
Um, so there you can basically see that. You can see your, your total revenue uh, uh, this time period and the previous time period. And the same thing for all of your other stats here. Um, I think that's that. Um, before I jump into ACOTS, I was just there was one other thing I was thinking of. Yeah, does anyone also have, let us know if you have any questions yeah. on the hub specifically here because you know, it's you might not have used this before. Heck, you might not be using also the advertising tool. So right. let us know if you have questions in the whole area. Yeah, perfect. Um, okay, I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, an additional point there, but let's jump right into um, uh, total ACOS yeah, or, or real ACOS. ACOS, depending on how you know it. Yeah, exactly. Um, so let's start with, I guess, first the concept of total ACOS. Um, when you're looking at your advertising, you're looking at ACOS. You see ACOS inside of the advertising manager. And that's a good indicator, uh, you know, a good indicator of whether or something is doing good or bad, right? Uh, in the advertising arena, um, the, you know, they've recently added in uh, ROI, right? So you can actually see if what you're doing is, is good and you're getting a kind of return on investment. Um, so that's another good indicator that you can see inside of Seller Central. But you can't ever really see your total ACOS or your real ACOS or true ACOS. You can't see that number in Seller Central. All you can see is, is your campaign resulting in good sales or bad sales, right? You know, Mark, let's do this. Just because, like, I know we mentioned it earlier as a term, but let's assume that this isn't necessarily a concept that everyone has a firm grasp on. Let's redefine this term in relation to your entire business. Yeah, good. So um, I think kind of going back to the definition of, of what we have here, advertising cost of total sales. So for the total sales that your business is getting, what is your advertising cost compared to that? What percent is that advertising cost compared to your total sales? And that's what a lot of people through, throughout the many years have been trying to figure out how do you get the best you know, tacos or the best uh, ACOTS. I'll just use our term, ACOTS. Yeah, yeah, but at least how, we're familiar with it, yeah, if even exactly. if you're not. <laughs> We've said it enough now. Um, so how do you get the best ACOTS for your business? And you have to know your numbers in order to do that. You can't just rely off of ACOS. So as a business, as a whole, kind of generally speaking, I guess best, best business practice um, is you want to have your ACOTS uh, anywhere between 7 and 15% as a good number. Reason being, uh, I guess there's a precursor to that. Yeah, exactly. Reason yeah. being is that um, generally most people have a profit margin of about 30%. And you want to have a ACOTS that's below 15%, uh, below 50% of that. So 30% profit margin, 15 would be your kind of your highest you'd want to be, basically. If you were being very aggressive and pushing for rank, you'd want to go up to about 15%. You could go over that if you have the money to burn on it, but hitting a, a, a going above 15%, you're kind of eating into your profits a lot more. So, of course, if you have a profit margin that's a lot higher, 50%, you know, 60%, 80%, that's a great product, oh my gosh, um, you can go higher on that, on that thing. But generally, you want to be below 50% of your profit margin. So, key number there that you need to kind of know and think with. Is right. How yeah. And, and also, you know, it's, it's an interesting topic to begin with because we, we have different categories of sellers, right? We have someone who's a brand new seller. This is totally irrelevant to most brand, brand, brand spanking new sellers in, right. in, in many ways. But then if we had, this is really also as a term probably most relevant to someone who's like, okay, good. I'm getting into PPC, not as a no novice, but now I'm actually looking at this going, okay, there's the balancing point that you kind of keep mentioning here. Like, it's like, you've got, okay, am I eating up to my, too much of my profit? But then on the other hand, and am I keeping the wolves at bay by spending enough on my PPC right. to yep. really take advantage, right? That's exactly right. And that's why you have that, that spread of about seven to 15%. Um, you could have, you know, if you go below 7%, generally you're, you're basically not being aggressive enough. You're leaving money on the table, right? Your, your competitors are gonna be most likely being more aggressive and and start tr trying to get that, that product revenue. Um, so, you could have scenarios where you have a below 7% 
uh, ACOTs, which could be really good. Um, so again, there's there's different scenarios that would kind of be okay with that. You know, we've uh, you can have an influencer who's uh, driving tons of traffic to your product, and you're getting hundreds and hundreds of sales that are that are not having to be paid for. Mm-hmm. That's awesome, and and that's a great. Um, You'll have an, you know, a two percent or five percent ACOTS, and then and and all that all that tells you is that okay, you have now the the funds to spend to be more aggressive in other areas, so you can actually yeah. spend more and 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 get more uh, exposure and not just rely on that, you know, that waterfall of of uh, goodness, right? <laughs> Um, you know, you, you, I love that, <laughs> you, 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 it, that, that could dry up, that waterfall could dry up. And when it does, you don't want to be starting to, to promote, you know, you yeah. want to, you want to have promotion going. So, um, you could obviously, you know, spend money now you can kind of allocate money in that area of promotion. Um, but again, just think with it, you know, if, if, if you don't have that awesome scenario and you're just plugging away, um, you want to work towards getting a, a, below 15%, above 7% ACOTS. Yeah. And also it is kind of a, a mid-size, not mid-size, but like in terms of your understanding of your business and in terms of your, I guess, experience or maturity in your marketplace, it really is in that mid-tier range because I'm sure you can kind of agree or you would, or correct me if I'm wrong, but, um, once you're getting to the point where you're a massive business where Amazon's PPC isn't really your main line of focus, maybe you have a ton of business off Amazon, like you mentioned, maybe you have influencers that are driving a lot of traffic your way, right. you kind of have to be able to look at that number you know, and take it with a grain of salt because it doesn't necessarily mean as much as it does for someone who is strictly speaking only on Amazon. And even people who are only on Amazon, Amazon I'm sure, the more established their business gets, the more they can probably pull off and, you know, really press down on the on the pedal, depending on what's going on in their business at that exact moment. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, one of my brands had that exact scenario where I had an influencer come in, uh, unbeknownst to me, actually, and uh, promote my product. And it was my, my ACOTS was down to about two to three percent for several months. Um, and that was great. And when, when that's dried up and kind of fizzled out, you know, I, I, I never stopped my advertising. So I, I kind of held on to that ranking and held on to that exposure, uh, took advantage of that exposure. So, um, it, it, it obviously plays a, a, a vital part in your business, but yeah, you can have different scenarios that, that warrant either being a little bit more aggressive or a little bit less aggressive accordingly. Um, Interestingly enough, uh, just yesterday talking with a, an MBS client, um, they asked a, a very apropos question of this is like, how do you influence your tacos? Mm-hmm. How do you influence your mm-hmm. ACOTS? How do you, how do you get a better ACOTS? Um, cause it's not, it's, it's, um, the interesting thing about it is it's not a, uh, immediately, um, you know, you can't go and uh, lay a brick and. ACOTS is better, right? Whereas you could go lay a brick, quote unquote, uh, and get a, a change in ACOS. You know, you could change a bid. You can stop, you know, bidding on a, a horrible keyword or whatever it is, right? You could you could make a change and get some some immediate results on ACOS. Um, whereas ACOTS is, uh, you know, a little bit different. And the it's kind of a long-term thing to think with of like, okay, you need to get your ACOTS into that range and and then keep it in that range. Um, and the way you're gonna work on that is is getting better and better ACOS over time so that you get better and better ranking, better, better exposure, get more and more organic uh, sales, which is why you have this separation right here, more and more organic. Um, and then, I mean, the only other caveat to that would be the influencer, right? Or some some outside external force driving awesome traffic to your listing that you're not having to pay for. Then of course, yeah, you, like a light switch, you can turn that that ACOTS uh, from from where it was to something really good. Right, so um, Vic is asking, and I think it's just to clarify. So that is the goal between seven and 15%. Yeah, that's like, that's where you wanna live <laughs> and you have to kind of jockey somewhere in between there. And again, though, w- Mark, you made this exact point. It depends on your profit margin. Right. So most people, most people uh, getting products on Amazon, uh, most um, 
coaches who teach people how to do Amazon, they'll generally have as a, as a, as a key point that when you are finding a product and uh, that, that you want to sell, you need to be able to sell it at a price that's going to give you a 30% margin or better. Um, so that's obviously a key point. And if someone didn't teach you that, okay, you know, slap them in the face or something, right? But uh, um, <laughs> you want to have a person you listen to. You don't have to physically <laughs> yeah. assault them, whatever. Yeah. Um, but uh, you want to have a, a profit margin that's going to be have enough room where you could do that advertising. You can do stuff, and you know, Amazon's taking their cut. Advertising ta is taking its cut. Tax is taking its cut. So you want to have that thirty percent margin or better, so that you can actually have some profit at the end of the day. Um, so yeah, that's the kind of the goal. If you have a 50% profit margin, okay, you can comfortably go up to like 20, 25%, um, at, you know, when you want to be super aggressive, ideally you can have it down in the 10% range still and be making, you know, huge amounts of money because you have even more profit now. Yeah. And, and I think where, again, this gets very different is influencers, or you're doing a lot of Facebook ads, or you're doing a lot of, let's say other things that. You probably, I don't know, you probably wouldn't suggest someone doing when they're just getting started, but things that really mature your business from an Amazon business to just a business. Right. Yeah. And it, again, it's, it's, it's all with um, where you're at as a business and, w and what kind of, um, what's the word, what kind of, um, how much you can throw down basically, right? You know, yeah. how much you're yeah. able to do because, you know, if you start off, uh, you know, selling something and you have, you know, a very good foundation, you get some good training, you know what you're doing um, and you have the things set up to do it, you can do all these other things. You could do Facebook ads, you can do, uh, you know, all these other smart strategies tied into what you're doing. It just, you know, it, it you need to know what you're doing in those areas yeah. and you need to be able to pay for those areas. Uh, you know, Facebook, Google ads, you know, whatnot uh, on top of Amazon ads and uh, restock and everything else. Yeah, it's, they're kind of above fundamentals at yeah. that point. Yeah. Um, so that is kind of the, the, the main concept that I wanted to get across um, on, a, on ACOTS. Now, the other thing is um, this is an overview, right? On my screen here, it's just showing the actual overview of um, of your whole account, right? Um, if you wanted to actually dive in a little bit more detail, you can go back to this profits page. And here you can see we, uh, if I just do it by uh, product name here, we broke that down by product as well. So now you can see, uh, so for the cocktail glasses, we have a 14.8 and then the wine glasses, a 16.7. So here you can actually see which products, if you have, you know, let's say 10, 50, 100 products, and you see that your ACOTS is starting to go up a little bit, um, you can dive in here and see which ones are actually the culprits, which ones are spending a little bit too much, not getting as good a conversion rate um, or whatever it is, and then know where to dive into and you know, it'll direct you that much faster. KPI, okay, good, this thing's going back, it's starting to go up uh, on my ACOTS, okay, what product is is doing that or which brand is doing that look into your brands look into your product groups down to your product find out which product it is go into your uh, advertising console find the keywords that are that are performing bad make adjustments on them and then you start to save that yeah and this is like he's talking about really actually managing and running your business because i've seen some of the other software suites out there they don't really have this data set like we do. And I'm not, part of me obviously is saying that to toot our horn because <laughs> this is a managed by stats live training for, well, anyone, but mainly managed by stats users. But uh, the point here is that if you aren't able to look at the metrics for a particular area, see the change in trend, and you're not then able to take that and drill in further, you're not actually running your business. Right. You're just not. Yeah. And that's a key point is knowing your numbers. You know, a lot of people will talk about their revenue, talk about how, you know, awesome their product is. And while that's all great, it is great. You, you do need to know your other numbers. You need to know if you're actually getting profit, um, you know, putting aside money for restocking, uh, putting aside money for other advertising, uh, you know, creating new products and all that kind of stuff. And if you don't know your numbers, you're going to be um, it's only that 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 uh, high is only is going to be short lived. Yeah, exactly. Um, Eileen is asking a good question. Um, she's asking, what are the expected ACOS, ACOTS for new products in a new brand in the first month, 90 days? 
Yeah, so um, of course it depends on what kind of launch method you wanna use. There's a bunch of them out there. A lot of different coaches teach different ways to do it. Um, generally, for the most part, it's uh, you expect a high ACOS because you're, you're trying to get exposure. Your, your, your product is new um, and you know, I, I would say 60 to 70 percent of the time, you are forcing yourself to be exposed out there. You're, you're, you're bidding top dollar on primary keywords that make sense to your product. Um, you're tracking those in, key, in in some kind of keyword tracker system to see if they make sense to go after, and you're pushing that exposure. So when you first start off, you might have a high ACOS. Generally, you probably will have a little bit higher ACOS. Um, you know, let's say if your if your product, uh, profit margin is thirty percent, and you're you're shooting heavy on it, if it's a competitive product, it could be you know ninety, hundred percent, hundred and fifty percent ACOS while you're pushing yourself up the rankings, uh, especially if you're going after uh, primary keywords or or long tail versions of those primary keywords. Um, it, you're, you're, you're fighting against a competitive market. And that's, uh, of course, the name of the game. You have to force your, your, yourself into that air arena. So get eyeballs on your product and you have to get your ad shown up on page one and other people are bidding for page one too. So you have to be super aggressive to do that. So you can generally see for the first month, uh, probably several months uh, where you're pushing yourself up the ranking. Um, of course, if you find a, a niche where there's not a lot of uh, crazy competitive uh, areas, but there is a good uh, search volume and sales in that area, great. You'll probably have an easier time of it, um, get yourself ranked up a lot faster. Um, and, and kind of a, an interesting factor that ties into that kind of launching period, uh, and a lot of coaches will talk about this, where when you first get started, you first make your product live. There's something that's called the, the honeymoon, honeymoon period. period. Yeah, the uh, the launch period, the new product period, whatever you want to call it. Um, but it's basically like a 45 day kind of grace period where Amazon will go, oh, this is a new product and we want to get it, get it uh, to have some exposure and see how it does. If it does great and it gets lots of conversions and good conversions, um, it, they'll, you know, they'll favor you, favor you more in the long run. So in that honeymoon period, they're kind of favoring you. They're giving you that extra exposure. Uh, and it's funny because a lot of people have in the past have talked about Amazon being broken. And while there is truth to that, uh, there is this aspect of you'll see a brand new product, um, you know, in the top five position on page one for for uh, some primary keyword. And like, what is going on? Well, it's probably because that guy has some favorability. Uh, he, it's a new product. It's just launched. He's he's you know doing a whole bunch of getting a whole bunch of sales on it. Um, he's only got five or seven reviews, but it's it's you know it's getting good conversion. So it's it's got that kind of favorability. If uh, the, the, being a smart marketer, he, you know, advertised that product uh, aggressively on those primary keywords that made sense and kind of kept his, his cadence high and his conversion rate high and he had a good quality product. Uh, what do you mean by cadence there? Uh, how many sales per day, like okay, a, right, a con good. consistent sales per day. Um, then he's going to keep that ranking or, or somewhat keep that ranking or go better, you know, depending on how many, uh, how competitive his competitors are. Yeah, and you know, this is really where it also is like, okay, if we let's step back a little bit further on this one for a second. If you have a good product, that's where you start, right? Assuming you have a good product, this is where all the rest actually makes sense. If you don't have a good product, this stuff isn't necessarily gonna work as simply, but if you have a good product, it's anything and everything you can do during that first little period. Um, you should look at it from this perspective like, this is where you need to look at your budget before you launch. And this is where you need to be smart about the amount of inventory you buy. Like if you've got 10 grand, don't spend nine grand on inventory. Right. You, you have to make sure that you have really enough money to not just even break even on your ACOS. You need to, like Mark said, actually invest in the advertising side of it. It's not just break even there. It's like, cool, if you also have the time and the know-how, do some external traffic in, you know what I mean? Like pay a, a couple influence, uh, influencers to talk about your product during that honeymoon period. If you have the time and the money, do some external Facebook ads diving in. Like the point is we're in an industry now that's mature. Yeah. It's not Amazon of 2014, 2015 right. anymore. You, you have to step up your game when you launch. So be prepared to spend a lot more, I guess yeah. would be the answer. Yeah. And, and 
it's also a, a, it's funny because it's a view that uh, a lot of people don't think with when getting started uh, on Amazon or when launching a product, even though they've been doing it for years. Um, you have to think with allocating a certain amount of money for the launch of that product, right? You have whatever kind of launch system you're doing, uh, generally that is gonna cost money, right? Um, and so you need to think with allocating, have an allocation of money for that launch period. Uh, common sense, but so it, it, it evaded me, you know, <laughs> for, for several, uh, probably a couple years. Common uh, sense is sometimes earned through yeah. lots of mistakes. Yes, right, <laughs> uh, painfully. Yes. Um, so, but yeah, you have to plan with that and think with it. Okay, you know, you're gonna launch a new product. Yeah, you need to, you know, get it to get that, that exposure and get some kind of system to get it really out there. But then of course the advertising costs, the PP, the uh, Facebook marketing or whatever other system you're gonna use to bolster that product and bolster that launch. Um, think with think with that as an as a as an expense that's kind of part of launching it. You know that that's part of making it going to be a successful product. Uh, that honeymoon period is is very vital. Uh, a lot of very experienced sellers will tell you it's it's you know that that can make or break a product. Uh, that honeymoon period. If you don't do well during that time, it can be a lot harder to get yourself ranked later on. Uh, Amazon basically is you know their their algorithm their A10 algorithm is thinking oh that thing didn't do well. So they're going to have to earn, you know, the yeah, respect. You're going to pay for the lack of planning yeah. in the beginning over time, probably tenfold. Yeah. That's a, that's a totally arbitrary amount of money. It, the point is like the planning and the better you execute a launch, the less you have to pay for it later on in PPC. Yeah, exactly. Um, Vic is asking really quickly for us to quickly just re-review what does ACOTS mean? So Absolutely. if you want to advertising cost of total sales. Um, so if you think with how much you're spending on advertising compared to your total sales, that percentage. So that's going to be a percent. We'll go back to that screen over here. Uh, here we go. ACOTS. So advertising cost. So how much I'm spending on PPC right here compared with my total revenue, product revenue. So that's my total sales and you got a percentage there. So that is, is your number and it's advertising cost of total sales. Um, yeah. Yeah, very simply, it's, it's a comparison of the amount you spent on advertising. <laughs> Dana just told me to put my hands down and I'm like, why? I like this position. No. Um, it's, it's exactly that. It's the amount you spent on advertising compared to your total amount. Dana, it's over there cracking up. <laughs> um, Pretty good, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's, exactly. Yeah. And that's, it, it's this, uh, I guess the key datum there is just make sure that the highest you go or the highest that you want to be in is gonna be half of your profit margin. That's all. Exactly, yes. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Danon's like, Throwing my game off. Um, yeah. Now, I guess the only area probably where there would be an exception to that rule is launching. Right. And right. that's, of, of course, your, your ACOS is going to be most likely horrible uh, along with your ACOS. Uh, you know, it's going to be, you know, when you're first getting launched, you're first getting rolling. Uh, if it's a competitive area, um, which, you know, many of them are, then you're going to be starting off, you know, quite high. Um, and, you know, if you can, let's say by the month two, end of month two, if it's not moving in the, in the right direction, then either something needs to change about your product. Maybe you're not getting reviews, you're getting bad reviews. Um, you know, there's something that's, that's not quite jiving with the advertising efforts you're doing and the results that you're getting. You want to look at um, another key kind of stat to look at is is your conversion rate, mm -hmm. you know, or how are you converting? If, if you're converting bad, uh, then, you know, Amazon's going to see that and go, okay, they're not going to, they're not going to give you those brownie points if you have a bad conversion rate. So, yeah. And I guess like another way of looking at this is this is where you got to make sure you do your homework before. And here's the thing. I'm not trying to kind of like make this all about launching, but in some ways that is kind of a smart way to do it because it, it doesn't matter if you're a brand new seller or an experienced seller, you're gonna be, you should be launching all the time. If you're not launching all the time, you're making a gigantic mistake. Yep, you're, so, you're, you're going into that, that emergency kind of situation where you're staying right. stagnant. Um, and, and experienced sellers all over will tell you, 
if if they're not launching a new product right then for whatever reason they're relaunching a product that that is kind of stifled off and, and not really gotten off the, the launching pad they're relaunching it doing something to to revive it and um so that those same principles apply you know okay how's it been doing what's it doing what keywords are we going after okay let's let's rework this let's do some external traffic let's do you know a big boost of whatever and uh tie that all in with their PPC and get that product moving again. Obviously they're fighting an uphill battle, but right. you're still doing, gonna do those launch efforts to get that product revived and, and, and moving in the right direction again. Yeah, and that's where it's kind of like, you have to, we, we harp on this point of PPC ready, but it is the most important part. It's like, do you have a good product? Good, okay. Do you actually know the keywords, the long tail keywords, the just Primary what are the keywords. phrases that, yep. yeah, exactly. What are the phrases that are really telling people what your product is? If you have product, keywords, good images, then it's like those are the points that you have to relook at if you're not actually converting on PPC. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, product quality. Does it communicate to the images? Because you realize your, your, your primary <laughs> image is your ad. Yeah, that's your so, communication. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I think that's basically it. Um, so then if anyone has any quick questions, you get about like mm, 20 seconds while I mm, hum and <laughs> haw and uh, round out the end of this thing. Um, so any questions, hit me, hit me with them quick. Um, otherwise, I would say um, this, the, you know, there are so many fundamentals and the more that you master each and every one of them, the better chances you are of, oh, now Vic's saying, great info, guys. You're Yes, thank you, Vic. Thank you for attending this whole time. Appreciate it. Um, good, well, yeah, I, I'd say like master all these fundamentals and any, like it almost seems like anyone who's doing well on Amazon, they really just mastered at least just a couple concepts. Yeah, yeah, it, it it's funny uh, over the years, uh, 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 ASM even, you know, going to the ASM conventions, you'll hear people that have, you know, made it really, really big by using one simple thing, becoming a master at that one thing and just honing in and, and, and making that one thing uh, drive them forward. You know, I, uh, a cousin of mine uh, only concentrated on uh, Instagram. He only used Instagram influencers and only used that for his things. And he's, he's you know, doing awesome massive um, yeah massive and you know it it it, it there's so many things and it, it kind of ties into that 80 20 rule of what's making you the most money or what can make you the most money put the, the 80 percent of your time on that um and then you have 20 percent of your time working on other things but um take that one thing and, and become a master at it yeah exactly well very cool um with that, we're gonna wrap up here. Uh, do us a favor, because the second we hit end recording on this, um, anyone can watch it from the beginning. If you only came in midway through this, go ahead and watch the first little half because we covered sort of a whole different set of yep. information at the beginning. Like we're obviously leaning pretty heavy here on ACOTS, yep. um, but we talked about some other stuff there too. So don't miss out on some of that content. But um, long and the short of it, if you guys like this video, share it share it with other sellers that you think would gain from understanding, having a bit of a better understanding of uh, ACOTS um, and like it because, you know, we, we're here to help you guys take your already existing business and expand it and hopefully do expand it in an easier way than you've had to expand it thus far. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So um, with that, we're gonna head out of here. So thank you so much for uh, joining us and um, we'll see you guys next time.